Ever since Invincible's father, Omni-Man revealed himself to be an alien conqueror bent on taking over the Earth, Invincible has been working for the Global Defense Agency led by Cecil Stedman. He's been fighting their fights, defeating their enemies. He's been a good soldier, but now something has changed. Invincible can no longer follow their orders unquestioned. Now he finds himself up against the very organization he's been working for. This won't be pretty. We're going to Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, and yes, you're reading that title right. After many, many months, finally, Invincible Comic Book Discussion Part 5. I am so sorry, but certain circumstances prevented me from even doing videos. It wasn't until mid-October that I finally picked up the camera again and started recording for everybody. So, yeah, thank you. If you've been if you have been waiting for this series, thank you so much for waiting. You are awesome. I did the first four videos. The first one is actually one of my favorite videos on this channel. It's a collaboration between Gabe Infinity Watch and myself talking about one of our favorite comic books, Invincible. And then I continue talking volume two, three, four by myself. The original plan was to celebrate the end of Invincible and do like a video a month leading up to the release of volume 12, which comes out a couple of weeks from now. So I have a lot of catching up to do. The plan has changed, folks. I couldn't reread everything of the previous volumes, but I have already read all of this stuff, so I sort of, you know, I already knew uh, what I was gonna say in the video but still you kind of want to go and reread stuff just in case and maybe your perception changes and stuff like that and that happens to be the case with volume 5 I didn't appreciate it the last time that I read it uh, a long time ago I should say but I do now and I find it super interesting and it's 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 part of this this part of the series is why I love the book of Invincible so much it's not because it's an alternate um, superhero tale with this character that has superhuman abilities and is a teenager it's sort of like this Superman-esque version of Peter Parker if you don't know about Invincible that sort of summarizes it in a very uh, uh, simplistic matter but uh, whatever uh, the point is uh, go watch the previous videos I am going to talk spoilers about the book usually this channel stays uh, spoiler free I like to just present what I thought of the book so you'll pick it up I don't want to give anything away because I want you to read it that's that's what I want to do I want to entice the reader but with this it's a comic book discussion I'm gonna talk briefly about the book and several of the highlights and all that stuff so, Invincible Volume 5, in my honest opinion, this is one of the turning points in uh, well, most of the series, actually, because you get really interesting themes. Mark, after being captured, along with every superhero in the planet, by uh, Dr. Seismic, or whatever his name is, sort of this mole man type character he finally gets his revenge and he captures every single hero they cannot escape and it's up to Cecil and uh, the US government with the help of the new Darkwing to uh, go in and bust everybody out and help them and it's uh, uh, it's a very turn it's a turning point because Mark doesn't realize what's happening and he sees like this former lunatic that was murdering people at his city uh, nobody knew about this it was kept under wraps and finally you get the hero questioning everything around him that's why I say it is the turning point this book of Invincible it's about doubt it's about self-loathing it's about mistrust it's about trust issues it's about privacy issues and it's about the realization that you're no longer a teenager and you're thrusting yourself into this big scary ugly world where things aren't as clear and as black and white as they seemed and everything is in a very scary grayish area from relationship problems to recent hookups 
with the character of Adam Eve to have finding your super uh, younger brother having superpowers, I should say, and wanting to train him, the character of Mark evolves in this uh, story considerably. He no longer is that teenager that we first saw in the first four books. He is no longer dealing with teen issues. He's starting to grow up and defy the system, defy the government. And we see that with uh, the whole Darkwing situation. Like, yeah, they capture Seismic, whatever. But Invincible just is not having it. He is super angry at Cecil for what he's doing. And it's sort of it's sort of a, a critique, I guess, on the author's part, uh, Robert Kirkman, about uh, the establishment, the status quo, and when is it right to be morally ambiguous. I think that's what uh, we're going for with Volume 5. The, uh, the whole reanimation stuff, using zombie soldiers, if you will, to fight the battles. There's a morality in there, like, should you really be desecrating bodies to create them to fight wars for uh, regular people? On paper, it makes sense, but up here and here, it may be a different story. And I just, I, I think it's uh, really well done and it's really interesting. I also really liked the character growth between uh, Oliver and uh, Invincible and just the relationship between the two brothers. Uh, Oliver is not fully, well, technically he's not human at all. He's part bug creature thing and uh, uh, Viltrumite from his father and he doesn't perceive humanity the way we would do or the way uh, Mark Grayson would and that comes to fruition when he's training him and Oliver goes a little bit too far and kills uh, the Mauler twins in a very brutal way. This series has not shied away from its violence. It doesn't glorify it but at the same time it's done it in such an extravagant B-movie type way where you kind of dig it, especially the colors. When there's like blood splatter, it is some of the most amazing drawings. And I think, by the way, Ryan Outley, this is the peak of his work. This is where, like, he is the man right there. I fell in love with the art in this book, and it's probably one of my favorites after uh, the whole entirety of Volume 6, which I will talk about at a later point in time. And I really enjoy the fact that uh, Kirkman is able to go into the psychology of superheroics and really question the dilemma of should you capture the villain or kill these bad guys? Should you trust the government? Should you stay morally ambiguous with things like uh, desecrating bodies, uh, hiring um, former killers, if you will, uh, cuckoo nutheads to work uh, operations that would otherwise seem like a black ops type thing you know uh, and you get this huge falling out of Invincible with Cecil and him abandoning everything of course the government is not gonna take that lightly which uh, is actually one of my favorite parts in the whole book when uh, Invincible is actually trying to escape because they discovered that um, like that uh, ear vertigo balance thing uh, really affects his uh, species, if you will. So he uh, is able to escape and they are able to remove the whole thing after a huge fight and uh, it keeps drumming on his head. It was just really uh, dramatic and tense, a really dramatic and tense situation, I should say. One of the other things that I really enjoyed in this book was the character arc of Adam Eve and uh mark it's really sweet really cool i love the way that things progress to uh, full-blown relationship status and uh, uh baby love making it, it, it went like this roller coaster of emotions which led into that whole time travel thing which was a real surprise i'm not gonna uh, dwell too much on that one because i want you to read it and let me know but i thought the the, the reveal of the character in the future storyline that was actually pretty interesting and uh, yeah I think that would happen if the continuity uh, continued if you will uh, that way like I mentioned the art in this book is superb Ryan Outley does a fantastic job of just bringing all of these characters to life I am genuinely impressed because it is some of the best work that he's done and I know it progresses even further but down the line 
because I had gotten so used to the way he draws the characters, I wasn't such a huge fan. I still love the the art of uh, I love I still love his art. He's one of my favorite artists, but I, this was fresh and exciting and really awesome. And I've hopefully I've <laughs> remembered to show some pictures. Uh, just really awesome stuff, and I think people are going to uh, dig it. This is, by the way, this is one of my favorite covers, not just because it's a uh, hardcover or anything, but this looks fantastic. Look at the spread with all the villains and characters and all that stuff. Just a really fun book. I, I get such a kick out of reading this. Man, just look at that. Look at that. It's probably a little bit too violent. Uh, for some guys out there and girls, but it, I love it. Look, this is one of my favorite spreads in the whole series, where you see this recap of Adam Eve and Mark Grayson and their relationship and how they got to where they are now. I think it's beautiful. It's expertly done uh, by uh, uh, Ryan. There is the lockdown. Sorry, but not out issue. Really cool. Uh, this is my favorite comic book cover of Invincible. I love, I don't know if you can see it, I love this so much. The colors, the composition, the way the characters look, fantastic. Same with the blue outfit, it's really cool. Uh, also, one of the biggest surprises in the book is the Alan uh, Omni-Man tale in space where the last uh, video I talked about them getting captured by the Viltrumites and sentenced to death. They do escape, and we get the introduction of Battle Beast to one of the best characters in the book, and we find out the big secret. Now I'm going to spoil things. The big secret, turns out, there aren't a lot of Viltrumites left. There's like 50 of them. And that is awesome, because you get this whole theme of evil propaganda of these guys using, uh, to coin a famous 2018 term, uh, the concept of fake news and saying, like, the Viltrumite Empire is so strong and it's such a, a vital force in the galaxy when it, it, it's actually not. It's a front. They're a dying breed and they're doing everything imaginable to stay afloat. And that is awesome because now you have uh, the trump card. You can you can win, you can beat them, but you have to uh, do it the right way. And the character interaction, by the way, of uh, Alan and uh, uh, Nolan is just fantastic. I love these two characters together. They have a beautiful friendship symmetry of just just uh, awesome uh, action star buddies, you know, something like that. Uh, yeah, overall, it's a very very cool book. Probably one of my favorite stories. Oh, what the hell? I love the whole book. But one of my favorite stories that I forgot to talk about before we wrap things up is, uh, and, I f and I forgot the name. Let me look at it real time. By the way, <laughs> I'll get to this in a second before I wrap things up. Powerplex is a very interesting villain. Let's highlight him again. Powerplex is a very interesting villain. He's kind of goofy and isn't exactly a powerhouse. He's got electricity powers. He's been stealing equipment to uh, use these powers and stuff. And he's blaming Invincible, which is a theme that could really be explored in other big two uh, titles from DC, Marvel. But um, they do it really interesting in, in this book where the character is angry at Invincible because his uh, sister, if I remember correctly, died in the Omni-Man slash Invincible fight uh, at the beginning of the series as a consequence of that fight. Uh, they crashed into a building and that building just fell and unfortunately she died and he is hellbent on uh, making sure the character pays and, and, and he wants to kill the character and all that stuff. So I think he's one of the more interesting characters, one of the more interesting villains, I should say, in the series of Invincible because of a morality issue. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it circles back to doubt, fear, and the not knowing what to do and not stay either black or white and just stay in this gray area where things are going to happen, bad things are going to happen, and the world is a big, scary, and just awful place. But the character learns through the actions of Adam Eve and his brother and all the uh, his friends and stuff 
it's the everyday actions and staying true to yourself and doing good that makes it a better place and sort of keeps the darkness at bay. So if you're watching this and you're going through some tough times or stuff like that, let this be sort of like a quick reminder that things can get better. Uh, it's not as dark as it seems and uh, good can prevail. You just, you got to stay positive. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard and I know it sucks. Trust me. I know. But you can't let the evil win, you know? And this uh, book sort of reminds me of that and cheers me up and, and, and keeps me going forward. It's just a an, an awesome, fun uh, read that I really enjoy. Now, I'm not saying this book is perfect because there are uh, things that I don't like and I'll go discussing that in further volumes. But for this particular book, uh, the astonishing, is it astonishing? The astounding, I should say, the astounding Wolfman makes his uh, makes an appearance here. Ah, guys, this is pretty awful. Um, the only good thing about that crossover is the art, because it, it's a two-issue crossover. But man, was it a pain in the butt to read! I really enjoyed the first uh, issue. Uh, because it was drawn by Ryan Oatley and the Wolfman character actually looks cool the way he draws him and stuff It really looks awesome, but Robert Kirkman his Wolfman series is just ugh, I really tried to read it and I am sorry I I simply was not a fan if you like it more power to you because you're awesome I just you know I, 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 I just it didn't click with me and if you want to see a quick review on the uh, Wolfman series I will link up a special video right there where you can uh, check that out, uh, some thoughts on the Wolfman series. But aside from that, really fun story, the dynamics and the morality issues really make it a win for me, and the art is ever expanding and ever growing and just beautiful to look at, just awesome, awesome stuff. Guys, what did you think of Invincible Volume 5? Um, I thought it was great, and I'm very curious to find out what you guys think. As always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform, just type a Week in Geekdom, and I'm there for you. As always, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I promise Volume 6 of the discussion series will come very soon, don't worry about it. I am back uh, doing Invincible videos, so hopefully you'll stick around for that. Thank you so much. As always, I will catch all of you on our next episode.